Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. And in this video I'm going to be showing you how to overhaul a Konica 3A rangefinder camera. Uh, this won't be a very in-depth overhaul. What this uh, will consist of is uh, disassembling the shutter to clean it out, uh, the cleaning of the lens elements, uh, disengaging the EV lock system, and we'll also remove the top cover and clean and adjust the viewfinder and rangefinder mechanism. And that's about all this camera requires. A uh, more detailed overhaul would require uh, removing and cleaning the film transport mechanism or things like that. But this camera hasn't been used that much and pretty much the only problem this camera has is a sticking shutter. Uh, this is a model with the 48mm f2 lens. Everything I do to this camera uh, can also, also applies to the camera with the 50mm f1.8 lens and most of what I do to this camera can apply to the Konica 3 with the 48mm f2 lens. If it's the later version of the 3 which has the EV interlock system like the 3A. The only difference between the later 3 and the 3A is the 3A uh, has the improved uh, viewfinder and rangefinder system. Uh, the shutter on this camera is kind of sticky, sometimes it fires, sometimes it sticks open and the shutter blades won't close all the way. Uh, it's a really common problem with these cameras. Uh, they get oil on the shutter blades and often get oil on the aperture blades and uh, it causes them to stick and have other problems. Uh, otherwise these cameras are pretty much bulletproof. The only weakness they have is uh, with the shutter. Uh, to do this job, pretty much all the work that you need to do to a 3A, or the work we'll be doing today, requires just a few tools. Uh, you need a slotted screwdriver, and you need a pointed spanner or a similar kind of tool. Something you can fabricate at home, you can buy, or you can use uh, needle nose pliers with the tips made a little bit sharper. Or in some cases you can use long tweezers with sharp tips. Uh, the first step to uh, removing the shutter to uh, be cleaned is to take a look here at, if you look at the camera from the front, at around the two o'clock position there's a small screw located on the top and this is the screw which uh, connects the EV dial to uh, the aperture mechanism on the inside. So the first thing we need to do is remove this screw. And I put the screws in a lens cap or a, a filter or something like that to keep them in one place. Uh, the next thing to do is uh, open up the rear cover and uh, take the spanner. There's a nut in here that holds the shutter assembly on and it has uh, four slots. Okay, and just put the spanner in the slots and give it a turn to loosen it. A little bit more of a turn. And then I use the slotted screwdriver to turn the nut the rest of the way off. Okay. Alright, and uh, the lens and shutter assembly is removed. removed. It's kind of an intermediary ring here, which is uh, used to actuate the shutter. When you, it should set in like that, and when you double cock the shutter and push it, this intermediary ring will rotate and uh, catch the release on the shutter mechanism. Next thing I want to do is remove the lens elements, so I just twist them off, uh, no tools are required. If you have one of these cameras and you're using it, then the shutter is sticky. That's simple enough just to uh, twist off the lens elements, uh, or just the front one if you have to, and apply a little bit of lighter fluid to the uh, shutter blades, and that'll usually free it up. So, I'm uh, looking at the back here. Uh, I can see a little bit of oil on the aperture blades and they uh, they're a little bit uh, the ring is a little bit harder to turn than it should be and okay slow it down a little bit all right 
Uh, the shutter is working now a bit better, but it's not working at the B speed, which is a common problem with these cameras. So I uh, will have to repair the. Oh, now it's working. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll describe when I, I take this apart how to fix the stuck uh, bulb speed setting. All right, so the next thing we have to do is uh, we're going to have to remove uh, the back cover here to the shutter assembly. And the first step to doing that is to take the two screws holding on uh, the flash sink socket. I don't remove the flash sink, I just kind of let it sit there. Uh, it won't move anywhere when I'm working on the shutter and it makes it easier to put it back together and also it kind of serves as a guide uh, how to line up at the back half of the shutter when I'm putting it back together. I'll uh, use a, a slightly bigger screwdriver to remove the screws which hold the rear of the shutter body on here. There are three screws. Uh, one of the three screws is shorter. The shorter screw is the one which goes here near the flash sink. The longer screws go opposite the flash sink socket. Okay, and then uh, that lifts off. And looking at the shutter, I can see there's a little bit of oil on the shutter blade, so I'll just go ahead and drop them out off there. And as I want to clean off the aperture blades, I need to remove the three screws which hold on the plate which holds them on. Okay, stick just a little bit. Uh, they're not that dirty. Uh, the camera would still be okay if I left them as the, the way they are, but it'll work better when they're clean. When I have it apart this far, uh, this is when I usually uh, disengage the EV mechanism. The EV mechanism is uh, actuated by this pin here. So I want to remove this. So what I need to do is uh, line it up in a place where there's a gap where I can get my screwdriver inside. That's a good spot. And it's held in by two screws. You don't have to remove the entire shutter to remove the EV mechanism. You can do it by removing the uh, front uh, shutter ring and such. I'll show how to do that uh, later on when I'm working on the shutter. So here it is. That's the EV interlock system with the two screws, um, I just throw these in the trash. There's uh, no real good use for them. So the uh, interlock is now disengaged. The next thing I want to do is I want to clean any oil off of the surfaces here. So I do that with uh, pure cotton, cotton swabs and ordinary Zippo lighter fluid. And I just clean and wipe off. You can tell the oily part because there's kind of a bluish uh, discolored area where the oil has uh, accumulated. And it leaves just a little bit of brown or yellowing on the end of the cotton swab. Uh, I'll do this at least a couple of times to make sure that I get it all off and I'll be extra careful to get around the, the pins and the mechanism which hold on the shutter blades. Okay and let me do it one more time. Using the light behind me, I can get a good look at the metal and how reflective it is and see uh, uh, where the oil is at. 
Next thing I need to do is I need to clean off uh, this plate here, which goes behind the aperture blades. And I can see from looking at it uh, in the light that it has oil on it. Uh, for this job, I use a microfiber cloth and I use the hydrofluid again. I apply a generous amount to make sure it's nice and wet and simply wipe it off. Good thing about this, it cleans off the oil really well, it dries instantly, it's quite easy to use, it doesn't smell as bad as like lacquer thinner or other chemicals which you can use for this job. Okay, and let's move on to the next step. Alright, the next step is going to be uh, cleaning off the aperture blades and shutter blades, and for that I'm going to use my uh, microfiber cloth and my lighter fluid. I just uh, generously put them with the lighter fluid and carefully wipe them off, uh, pulling but making sure not to bend them because if you bend them it makes it very difficult to put it back together and if they are bent they'll rub against each other and get shiny and stuff. I look again and make sure that there are no spots I've missed Okay. And you can kind of see the difference in the color. One is a kind of a light gray color and the other is a very dark gray, almost black color from the oil. So it's quite easy to tell when you have them clean by the color. Luckily the shutter blades on these cameras are, or the aperture blades I should say, are uh, a lot easier to work on than some of the earlier cameras. Uh, the Kanaka 2A uh, and some of the early 3s featured a uh, 9 blade aperture which is uh, much more difficult to uh, work on. It's not easy to take apart and clean but it is difficult to line up everything and put it back together. Uh, you need a lot of patience uh, to work on on the earlier models of the camera with the uh, uh, nine blade apertures. I used to just uh, take a film container and fill, fill it full of solvent and just drop these in there and then take them out and wipe them off one at a time. but. Uh, it's kind of messy and for some reason I was always tipping over the film container and making a mess with this solvent so I find this way to be less messy and just as effective. These uh, shutter blades uh, the number of shutter blades varies from camera to camera uh, they can have either five or six and the reason they have one number or the other has to do with uh, setting up the, the shutter speed. Uh, by adding an extra blade it can slow down a shutter which is too fast and removing a blade can speed up a shutter which is too slow. You know, five or six blades, uh, whichever, they don't leak light one way or the other so it's not because um, you know, of uh, light leak issues. There's a later model rangefinder camera made in Japan called the Yasuhara which uh, had uh, a leaf shutter and worked with I guess Leica lenses and this, this one's quite not notorious for light leaks. You couldn't carry the camera without having the lens cap on otherwise light would get around the shutter blades and expose the film and not a, a pleasant thing. On these old ones here I find that uh, uh, if I have one with six blades, I use, I always put it back together with just five because uh, these old shutters, they lose a little bit of uh, spring tension over the years and by uh, taking out the one of the shutter blades, uh, uh, the speed increases a little bit and, uh, gives, and runs a little bit more accurately. 
uh, putting it back together the one that shutter or the aperture with only five blades is quite easy uh, what you do is you see that there are five slots here and we have a, a pointy end to the aperture blade and around it you want to put the pointy in first with the pins downward into the slots and I move in a counterclockwise motion installing these I find that uh, works best pushing one under the one in front of it uh, some you might try it you might like to do it the other way but uh, in my experience this is uh, the way we are least likely to have problems okay and then holding it this way I make sure that uh, I've turned it all the way to the left there are the, the three screw holes which hold on the back of the uh, the shutter assembly to the uh, front part of the shutter assembly and here there are two holes which are closer together and one which is opposite there's a large gap here a large gap here and a small gap here the small gap on the left side uh, if you do this right uh, there should be a pin from the aperture blade quite close to it and when you hold this uh, plate here which retains the uh, shutter blades in the same position you can see uh, there's the uh, uh, the screw hole here with the pin right next to it so if you're holding it like this if you imagine like you're looking at maybe a bear's face this is the chin and these are the ears uh, you want to line the bottom and the top up like this and then I just very carefully just drop it on there and then the next job is lining up lining it up so the pins fall in it's a little bit difficult for me to do this with the, the camera looking over my shoulder And the pins thankfully have little holes in them which you can use to move them around if you have to. You can uh, use a needle or something sharp inside to kind of uh, pull them over so they line up with the holes. Sometimes you don't have to do this, you just wiggle it around a little bit and everything falls into place. But that's not going to happen while I'm trying to make a video. Okay, alright, so the three uh, screw holes are lined up, all the pins are set in. The next step is to uh, replace the three screws, which hold on the bracket. Just have to kind of wiggle them around until they fall into place. Sometimes they go easily, sometimes they don't. This one's a little more stubborn than usual. I work on a cloth surface like this. Uh, it prevents small parts from rolling away. I never work close to the edge of the table because if you work close to the edge of the table things fall off the edge of the table and anything that falls off you won't find until you're looking for something else. Shutter blades are clean, the shutter's working, it's turning a little bit easier now than it did before. I'll make sure these are snug because you don't want these to come loose any time in the future. If they come loose then everything has to come apart to, uh, to fix them. 
All right, the next part is, uh, the next tricky part is putting the shutter blades back in the shutter without them uh, falling off or getting lost. Um, as you can see, there's a black metal part, a steel part, and an aluminum part. Uh, they're kind of gaps and differences in, in surfaces on the aluminum part, so I always start on this uh, steel part here, which is the flattest. And I'll set in the first shutter blade. Make sure your hands are clean when you're doing this so you don't get fingerprints on the shutter blade. It's really annoying when you put it all together and you're, you put the lens and everything back on and you're looking in the shutter, checking it, then you see you have fingerprints uh, right in the middle. And as I said, I only put in uh, five of the six blades. That tends to make the, the shutter run a little faster and more accurately in one of these really old cameras. All right, so uh, the shutter blades are set in there. Uh, let me add some light here a little bit. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, put the rear section or cover back onto the shutter. As I said, I left the flash sync socket uh, on the shutter and what I want to do is line it up with the slot here on the rear cover. There are a couple of other things here. We have the uh, flash sync speed switch. I'll turn that out so it's pointing straight out. And the next thing we have here is the shutter release uh, lever and its spring. I'll push that in so the spring is in and out of the way and isn't, doesn't get pinched under the cover. Alright, and I line this in carefully and I can see the screw holes lined up underneath. Now the outer holes lined up with the screw holes on the bottom side. And once it's sitting down I'm going to pull this back a little bit and then push it down the rest of the way. And it should sit flat with uh, no gaps. All right, the next thing I need to do is install the screws. And as I said before, there are three screws and one is shorter than the other two. The short one goes here close to the flash sink socket. Okay. And a good way to tell when you've done this right and nothing is hung up is when you're tightening in the screws, uh, there's no movement on the back section of the shutter assembly. If you are tightening down the screws and as you tighten the screws, if you see it pull down, there's something wrong. It means there's a spring or a lever or something is not where it should be. And it, it can also uh, be a sign that the camera was dropped and uh, there's some damage around uh, where the lens mounts to the back plate. Okay, so look around here, no gaps. I'll snug these down very tight because once again you don't want these to come loose. Sometimes they do work loose and I get these cameras and the shutter blades are all rattling around inside the lens and that's because these screws work loose and everything else came apart. Alright, I charge the shutter by pulling this back and then firing it. Okay, it's working. Alright, and let me see, I'll try the bulb speed again. Alright, that's working. Then I'll try one second to see if that's working. Alright, that's working and sounds good. Alright, so the last thing to do uh, when putting the shutter back together is put in the screws which retain the flash sync socket. Uh, these are, this can be a little bit uh, tricky. They're very small and kind of have to drop them in there just right and wiggle them around until the screw faces the right way and then tighten it in.
All right, uh, so uh, the shutter is finished and uh, ready to reinstall. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, next we're going to uh, reinstall the lens elements in the shutter. Uh, look around the filtering for damage. Uh, look for... Yeah, this one has a lot of... Uh, old fungus on the front glass, but none that I can see on the inside. Now this camera was kept in that leather case for a long time, so that would probably explain the, the fungus on the front. And I can kind of feel it as I'm wiping it off here. It feels a little rough and scratchy. Once again, bring up my microfiber cloth. Okay. Alright, that's pretty good. And next thing I'll take a look at the... Oh, the rear lens is really nice. No fungus, no haze. It looks nice and clean, which is really... a good sign. These cameras, when they are kept in their cases, they are often... Uh, going to have mold or fungus inside. These can have mold and fungus which are different things. The mold is can be cleaned up and is rather harmless. Uh, the fungus is not harmless uh, depending on what it gets into. Uh, the lens coatings on the Konica cameras are pretty much impervious to fungus so in most cases uh, more than 90% of the time you can simply clean the fungus off but on rare case it, cases it will etch a little bit especially on the the rear of the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens but even a little bit of etching doesn't make any difference in the performance of the lens I don't worry about it okay all right and so I want to take off the uh, the front of the shutter here to clean it up a little bit and to show you how to remove the EV mechanism if you have one of these cameras and you don't want to take it all the way apart. On second thought, maybe I'll wait until I have the, uh, this put back on the camera so that would be a more realistic uh, idea of uh, how to clean it up or how to remove the EV mechanism. So uh, before I put the front lens element back in, I want to uh, clean up around the body a little bit. So I'll just use my uh, Pcal metal polish. These often have marks on them from uh, the hood being slid on and off. Uh, this is just raw aluminum, so it polishes up quite nicely. Uh, replacing these filterings is not difficult. There are set screws around them, so if you have one of these with a, a bent filter ring and you have access to a spare, you just loosen the set screws. The ring comes off and you can just put another one in. Right, and I'll clean the inside. The inside is very clean. No haze or fungus on this one. Okay, that looks good. And dust inside. And then thread the lens element back in. And then installing is quite easy. On these cameras you have to put in the rear ele lens element before you put the shutter back in. Uh, 
possibly you can do it with a rubber tool after the lens is back in, but if you're working on like the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, it's impossible to remove the rear element unless you remove the shutter assembly from the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back in, and I'm going to use the flash sync as a guide. It's going to go into this uh, groove here at the uh, 10 o'clock position of the lens. And just drops into place. And one thing I have to watch for is uh, I have to pull back the shutter release lever a little bit because it lays over the top of the intermediary lever which runs to the shutter button. And if I tighten uh, the shutter, the nut which holds down the shutter with this pinched in here, what it tends to do is uh, distorts the release lever and sometimes distorts the uh, other lever on the inside which actuates the uh, bulb setting for the shutter. So the next thing I do is I start the nut on the back with a screwdriver just turning it in the slot clockwise until it starts to get snug but before it's all the way snug I will come back and recheck and make sure that uh, the shutter release lever is still moving freely and it is so I'll go ahead and tighten the nut down the thing to keep in mind is some of these cameras have shims which are located between the shutter assembly and the camera body some don't some have a very thin shim some have two or three shims some have one thick shim this one had no shims uh, this one uh, obviously never had them uh, this one hasn't been taken apart before there were no tool marks on the nut on the back and no tool marks on the screw here uh, which uh, holds on the or I guess which links the uh, aperture to the aperture mechanism on the inside. And the next step is I need to reinstall this so I will turn uh, the aperture ring until I see it line up with the threaded hole on the inside. And then I will reinstall the screw. Don't drink coffee before you do this, it makes you a little jittery. Normally it's easier than that, but uh, in my defense I did have a really strong cup of coffee before I made this video. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, the shutter uh, overhaul is complete on this camera, and okay, one second, okay. All right, very good. Everything feels good. One thing I look at is I look uh, at the gap which goes around the shutter ring, and it should be fairly consistent all the way around. Uh, if it's tight on one side and uh, there's a large gap on the other, that usually means the camera has been dropped and uh, the, the rear part of the shutter, uh, uh, I guess, body has been become distorted or bent a little bit. And in order to fix it, you usually have to replace the rear section of the uh, uh, shutter body. So, anyway, uh, that's the... Uh, uh, overhaul of the shutter completed and uh, I guess the the first half of the job is complete so let's take a break and I'll start on the second half all right so this we're now moving on to the second part of overhauling the camera and that involves uh, cleaning out and adjusting the viewfinder and rangefinder assembly uh, the basic tools you need are once again a slotted screwdrivers and a pointed spanner or a pointed pair of uh, tweezers or needle nose pliers. Uh, this camera still has the soft release attached to it. I'll remove that. And I have to remove this nut which goes over the top of the frame counter with the pointed spanner. 
You have to be very careful with these nuts because the tips of the spanner always slip out or they slip out quite easily and can scratch the top of the nut. Uh, I have to remove the film rewind knob so I open this up, uh, put the screwdriver between the forks and give it a twist anti-clockwise or counterclockwise and turn it until it falls off. Then you can pull it out and I put the two back together uh, so neither one gets lost, they don't become separated. And then I have to remove this little screw on the left side, once again using my uh, pointed spanner. Alright, next step I have to remove the flash shoe cover and then slide that back and there are uh, two screws underneath and I lift that off and the next part is just lift off the top cover and then uh, take out the, the shutter button and put it with the, your other hardware and here you see the uh, complete viewfinder in rangefinder mechanism in the Konica 3A. Uh, this is a very high quality uh, viewfinder and rangefinder system. There are no mirrors used anywhere. Everything is uh, made of solid blocks of glass, much like a, a Leica or an Nikon SP or something like that. When you consider uh, what these cameras sell for right now and the amount of quality that they have, they're, uh, they're quite a bargain because uh, as far as uh, engineering and the quality of materials and uh, the, the workmanship involved, they, they easily rival uh, cameras like the Leica or the Nikon SP. Uh, really good stuff. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take the, this apart and get it cleaned out. and. Uh, what I have to do next is remove this spring cover, which is held down by three screws. What I usually do is I, I try to take this off in one piece and just keep the screws with it. Uh, when you take off the, the top, you really have to get in between the glass elements here to clean it out. And that's kind of a difficult thing because this prism sits here and uh, Fungus tends to grow on uh, the front and side surfaces, and you really need to be able to clean it out. And to get it out, you have to remove the prism. And uh, the prism is glued into place. So what I usually do is I kind of push with my thumb a little bit, and it usually just the glue releases and it pops right out. Uh, do not do that with this, the main uh, viewfinder prism here, because this is set in, in a very precise location. Uh, with a couple of screws which adjust it and uh, if you do loosen this one and have to glue it back in it's going to take some time to get it set up and take time for the glue to dry. Uh, this one has some dust around the front so I'm going to take out the windows here. Uh, depending on how bad this is, how bad these are, sometimes I have to remove the glass to get in and clean behind them. Uh, this one is pretty dirty on the front, but uh, it's very clean on the back, and I don't see any fungus between the glass and the metal bracket, so uh, I won't bother to remove the glass from it because it's it's not really necessary. So I'll just clean this off with uh, ordinary lens cleaner. Now this one's quite nice. Usually the glass on these is uh, coated with the same coating they put on the lenses, but people often rub off uh, these with cloths or whatever, and it, it rubs the, cro the coating off and you can kind of see marks on it. Uh, this one's nice and it hasn't uh, had the coating taken off. Uh, I'll just quickly clean up. The inside's really nice in this camera. 
Uh, there's no dust or dirt or any uh, any problems on the inside. Okay. Uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, replace this part. Uh, this is the mask on uh, the camera, which uh, which you can see the frame lines. There are two metal masks moved together. And the good thing is these are just made out of metal with uh, slots machined into them. So uh, they're very uh, reliable and they don't break. Uh, some of the other cameras use glass with, uh, uh, I guess, a glued on or painted on uh, outlines or frame lines on the glass. And unfortunately the paint can deteriorate over the years. And uh, I hate when I drop the screw inside. But yeah, but with the metal uh, masks, it's not an issue. They're easier to clean, and they don't fail. They don't become unglued and or unlaminated or or anything else. They're they're quite simple, and uh, I'm glad that Konica used that kind of system. Always make sure everything is tight. I don't want anything to come loose in the future. All right. So the next thing is to clean the glass prisms here. And uh, this one has some uh, dirt and such on it. I can see. So. Now doing this, getting this cleaned up will make the, the viewfinder and rangefinder much cleaner and uh, perform much better. Uh, the mirror on these is pretty durable. I just touch it a little bit. And that looks good. The next step is to clean the prism. I don't know, you probably can't see from there, but this one uh, did manage to get some uh, fungus on it, but it's not so bad. And using the light ceiling light over my shoulder, I reflect it off, and I can make sure that there's uh, there are no marks. Luckily, uh, the prisms aren't coated as well as the lenses are, but luckily none of the coating rubbed off on this one. Okay. All right, and then the last part is the little window on the back, which directs the reflection from the rangefinder mirror. With all these surfaces clean, you'll get a lot of you know, good contrast from the rangefinder focusing system. Okay, and I need to put in a little bit of glue to hold down the prism. Uh, the glue I use is Bondo G17 glue, which is like the universal glue of choice for camera repairs in Japan. And make sure that there are no strings from the glue which stretch out. This one right here. All right, uh, there's a little spring here uh, which fits behind the uh, rangefinder uh, 
arm, which moves the prism when you're focusing it back and forth. This is kind of an optional spring. Some of these models have this spring and some of them don't. Uh, the ones with the spring, it's a little bit more difficult to reinstall the prism than the ones that don't have the spring. Uh, I just have to drop it in here and pull back the end of the spring a little bit with the tip of the screwdriver until the prism falls in place, or should fall in place, like so. And I'll make sure, looking at the front here, that it's nice and flat and pressed against where the uh, frame line screen is. The next thing I want to do is put this uh, spring plate on top, which holds everything down. There are three screws which hold it down. Uh, two short ones go on the side and the front, and the long one goes closest to the prism on the right side. These are a royal pain to put in if you don't know how. What I do first is I start by putting the uh, screw on the left hand side in the one which hangs down the lowest and then holding this I will start this screw first. I'll tell you right now that if you try to do this any other order every time you try to put in this screw it will fall out and uh, drive you nuts. And I do the long screw. And before tightening down, I make sure that the prism is pushed flush up on the front. And then the last screw, and you have to push this down so it reaches to where the threads are. And tighten all three down. Okay. All right, uh, and that's it. Uh, everything is in place. The next step now, after this is done, is to adjust the range finder. And there are two screws which you must use to adjust the range finder. The horizontal adjustment is located right here. And if you have the back cover here, uh, the top cover, uh, this cover unscrews, and below that cover would be this screw and you turn this in and out to set the horizontal adjustment. The problem that, uh, we, that you can have with these screws is that uh, if you do a lot of adjustment, they become very easy to turn and they don't hold the adjustment very much. So uh, uh, I always, after making an adjustment, I seal these with black lacquer paint and let it dry before I ship the camera and that will prevent the screws from uh, working loose while the camera is moving. The other screw is the uh, vertical adjustment and we have these uh, two s screws here which hold on the top cover. If I put the top cover back on this access hole here is right above the adjustment screw for the vertical adjustment and this is a uh, once again a small screw and also uh, one also uh, this screw can turn in and out very easily so it's a good idea to uh, seal this with a drop of nail polish or nail lacquer or touch-up paint or something like that so it doesn't move. Uh, the next step is to clean the back of the prism. I always do the this part last because uh, if I do it first I'll end up getting fingerprints on it and I'll have to do it again last anyway so uh, better you know, do it last in the first place. Okay, using the light behind me, there are no marks on it. Uh, the next step is to clean the, there's another glass element built into the top cover. Luckily this camera, there was a little bit of a fungus uh, on the prisms, but the glass inside had no fungus at all, which is kind of odd. And you know, this is really nice. This, the glass on this one doesn't have any uh, rub marks or anything, so this camera wasn't uh, bothered too much. Uh, these cameras can have uh, rubber foam, uh, which goes around the front here as kind of a seal around the front of the prism. 
and you have to clean that off before you put the camera back together because it, it kind of floats around. Uh, this one is a newer one which has a, a piece of uh, rubber cut in to fit. The plastic on the back here is uh, prone to cracking or breaking. Uh, you can easily fix that with a five minute epoxy, you know, the clear stuff. So what I do is I mix it up, I put it in the gap and I squeeze it together um, with, uh, squeeze it and use tape or something to hold it close and about 10 minutes or so it's dry. Uh, when I was young I used to work as a jeweler and we used to do uh, inlay with mother of pearl and stuff like that. And jewelers just use five minute epoxy to hold these things together and it polishes up like glass so it works quite well. So i uh, ready to put the top cover back on. I went to polish it up a little bit uh, in the places which I can't reach once the top cover is put back on. That's mainly in the front here where it will tuck down behind the behind the lens assembly. And also I want to clean out the glass around the film counter. I'll do the inside first because that's always the least dirty. You don't want to push too hard when you do this, otherwise the glass can pop out. Just do it gently. And then do the top. Alright, so far so good. Next, I'll uh, put the uh, shutter button. Uh, there's kind of a like a half moon shape on one side. That will go toward the outside, away from the uh, rangefinder assembly. And I simply drop the top cover on and make sure that the shutter button comes up. And next I'll put on the flash shoe. I put the screws in here first before I put the shoe back on and I put on the shoe first. The reason I do that is sometimes one of these screws will decide to fall out and go inside this hole inside the camera and you can never shake it to get it back out which means you have to take everything apart and remove the top cover to get the screw out. So I always do this first and I make sure that they're inside here so I don't actually drop it in. Make sure these are snug. All right. Uh, the next thing to do is to put in the screw on this side. Then I tighten it in with my pointed spanner. Just a little bit tight, it doesn't have to be very tight. Uh, the next thing is the arrow part for the film counter. Make sure that if I open the film door, the counter will reset. Close the door and then line this up so it's exactly centered with the, the two arrows are centered together. Once again do this carefully so the tool doesn't slip and make any scratches. Uh, the next step is to replace the film rewind knob or lever. This is a little bit of a tricky job because inside there is a, a spring which catches onto this groove here and prevents the lever from being pulled up to and, and just holds it in the proper position. When you pull it up it comes down a little bit and when you should push it back down the spring will hold the lever downward so it doesn't get pushed, out, or pushed up or out of the way or get into anything. So if I turn the camera like this, I can see the spring pulling across. I'll use my smaller screwdriver. I'll just start touching the tip in. Okay, and then I'll Twist it on, close the film door, fold it back down. Next step is to put in the cover under the flash shoe and put in the screw and replace the soft release. 
and that's it uh, it's finished now the shutter works properly it's nice and clean uh, fires at all speeds aperture blades are clean uh, the winding mechanism is fine it's uh, it's nice and easy not too difficult to move the rangefinder and viewfinder system is clean all the prisms are clean the mirror is clean I'll do the final adjustment tomorrow it's nighttime here and I, I don't try to adjust these at night uh, tomorrow when it's sunny I'll go ahead and do the final adjustment on it and anyway uh, that's it that's the completed job so uh, the last part of the video I'll start in a minute and that is going to be how to disengage the EV system on one of these cameras uh, without taking it all the way apart all right so uh, as I promised this is going to be the part where I show you how to uh, disengage the EV interlock on the Konica 3A camera and uh, you can use this system on also the Konica 3 the later versions of the 3 that have uh, the EV interlock you can also do this on the Konica 3A with the 50mm uh, f1.8 lens but there's an extra step involved for the 50mm lens uh, the camera with the 50 millimeter lens has a bigger lens element and there's a set screw which prevents the lens from being turned up. So uh, to start with, uh, you would locate the set screw on the bottom of the lens and back it out maybe three or four, maybe three turns. And then uh, unscrew the front lens element. Uh, you know, with the, the 48 millimeter lens you don't have to remove any screw, you just remove the element. And uh, looking at the camera this way, if I'm looking from the bottom to the top, right up here just about midnight is the uh, catch which uh, holds on uh, the uh, shutter speed ring, shutter speed selector ring. So what I'll do is using my pointed spanner or you can use tweezers or something else, uh, you need to turn this. It doesn't matter which direction you turn, you can turn it left or right just as long as it uh, turns. until the flat side is pointing toward the center. All right, then I turn this just a little bit and then uh, it should pop out fairly easily. Okay, so that's the front ring, and there are grooves in the back here. These are uh, detents for the uh, shutter speed selector ring. And lift this off. The EV interlock system would be screwed on right here with two screws. Uh, earlier in the video I removed it, but if you were doing it uh, without taking out the shutter, uh, this is how you would do it. You would go ahead and take off the screws, discard the interlock pin and the screws, and then you would have to put this back on. I also said that I would talk about how to fix the broken bulb setting if you have one of these uh, cameras which has a bulb setting which doesn't work. I don't know how close I can get here to the... It's kind of slow but it's working. All right. So this is the shutter release switch right here and right behind it, right here, is a lever which moves in and out. And it's supposed to move in and out freely without sticking. When the bulb, uh, bulb setting is not working, what this means is this lever is stuck and it's usually stuck somewhere in the back position. It's been pushed downward mainly because someone probably was doing some kind of work and pinched the catch here between uh, the shutter release lever and uh, the intermediary lever. So to do this you simply press down so it doesn't move and pry up just a little bit underneath the uh, bulb intermediary lever until uh, it moves freely back and forth. There's a very small uh, spring which keeps it pushed forward. Be careful not to mess up the spring or lose it or whatever. Uh, it, it can be kind of a, a real pain. But uh, yeah, this is the problem when the bulb setting doesn't work on your lens. So, uh, removing the EV interlock system, you can now 
adjust the uh, shutter and aperture speeds independently without them being locked together. So we have to put this back together now. So um, what I do is, if you look next to this uh, red switch here, this is for the uh, X sync and such speed. There's a spring here. This is the booster spring for the one five hundred uh, second. So uh, this should, this part, this open part of the uh, shutter speed selector, should be toward this side here with the booster spring. And this little thing, which looks like a bow tie on the top. Uh, see, it's a little slow to focus there, but uh, this is the spring which engages the detents here. Uh, this should be dropped on, so this is kind of like the 12 o'clock position. Then I uh, I turn the ring left and right, and oops, let me move this here. Yeah, it's no good when you hear someone say, oops, it means something is not quite right. Yeah, it works much better if I don't have the shutter charged. All right. So once again, I drop it with the bow tie thing there at the top, and then I turn it back and forth. And uh, if this lip here next to the bow tie is pushing against the booster spring, and I can kind of hear the uh, slow speed gears moving a little bit as I move it from one end of the uh, travel to the other. Then it's set OK. Uh, the next thing I need to do is install the front of the shutter panel here. So uh, that goes with uh, this little guy here. It's supposed to end up close to the 12 o'clock position. We'll move it back to around the, say, uh, So kind of like the uh, uh, 1150 position. It drops in, turn it just a little bit so it's over uh, this notch here. And then you turn the little tab here so the flat spot is pointing up and away from the lens. Okay. And that's it. Blow out the dust. All right, a test and make sure it's working. Okay, and I'll try. Oh. Bulb section is okay. As you can see, I can turn the uh, aperture ring independently of the shutter speed. And how's one second sound? All right, very good. Alright, and that's it. Uh, this camera is finished. It needs a little bit more cleaning up and polishing on the outside, and of course uh, I would get inside and clean out uh, the film chamber and the inside of the camera, but uh, mechanically this camera is good to go and it's ready to use and should probably work without any more problems for another you know, 50 or 60 years. Anyway, uh, that's it for the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'll be posting more videos about vintage Japanese cameras and such. If you want to see them, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.